Vsauce. I'm Jake, and get ready. Tap. Oh, no! Ah, I can't control my power. Quick, protect yourself in this test chamber. Test Chamber is a very puzzling puzzle game. You push blocks around with your block-headed body to bridge the gaps between platforms, but it is not as straightforward as it seems. In fact, the game moves in many directions because surrounding your specific area are the same areas repeated, mirroring exactly what you do. Use them to your advantage to escape each level like walking from one to another to get around obstacles. As you progress, you interact with different characters and find out about the infinite world that you and your fellow blockheads are hoping to escape to. Just don't get too close to the edge, but if you fall, well, I hope that you're a hanger world. If Happy Wheels and Spider-Man had a baby, it would be Hangar World, the sequel to the very popular Hangar. Swing your floppy body from place to place as you avoid spinning propellers, lasers, and blades. You'll definitely lose some legs, and well, the majority of your body, but those appendages were just holding you back anyway. Look at how majestic you are. Fly, my sweet child, fly. But ah, just don't lose your head or you lose the game. This game is super realistic. I mean, just look at those physics, especially the physics of the rope. Do you like untangling string? You do? Fantastic, then rope is definitely your game. There is a grid. In that grid, you have your rope that must be untangled and formed into the shape shown. Nothing too crazy, right? Wrong! The lines can overlap, but the black dots have to be on their own point. No stacking. The ropes get more intricately tangled and arranged as the game progresses, and it can get very difficult. I don't know about you, but this hexagon grid is making me feel trapped. How about you and I go on an adventure? Nubs Adventure. A platformer where we find our cute little nubs with his home destroyed. He has to explore and find the crystals needed to rebuild it. On the journey, you'll encounter various enemies to boomerang into submission, ropes to climb or cross, teleports to teleport with, and creatures to control. Like this giant worm that blasts out of the ground and can move through all manner of dirt. The game feels very open, encourages exploration, and has a very nice visual style. Speaking of visual style, let's create our own with Polygen. Polygen is a photo manipulation tool that lets you turn your pictures into something like this. Once you've done that, you can go in and adjust the color effect and the points. It comes with two styles unlocked, but gives you the option to create unique custom ones. When finished with your image, you can share it with other users and see their creations. If you end up not liking your creation, well, you can always put it in the Shred Mill. Not to be confused with my death metal band of the same name, Shredmill. Shredmill is a fairly straightforward game. Don't get shredded, or pushed off the treadmill, or blown off the treadmill. Really, just, just stay on the treadmill. You tap between both sides, avoiding all kinds of destructive items to get the highest score possible. However, do not avoid the little trampoline thing. They are fun, unless they jump you directly into a shredder, in which case, how could you do that little trampoline? That's it, get your things and pack, man. 256. Pac-Man 256 takes the classic game you know and love and makes it endless. PM moves through endless levels doing what Pac-Man does, eating white dots, fruits, avoiding ghosts, destroying ghosts, oh, and there are now power-ups like lasers and bombs. Also thrown into the mix is the map 256 glitch from the original arcade game that slowly creeps towards you, corrupting everything in its path. Quick side note, it happened in the original game because Pac-Man's level counter was an 8-bit byte, so it could only store 256 distinct values, 0 through 255. Because of a bug in the code, after level 255, it rolled over to 256, which resulted in this. <clears throat> but back to the topic at hand, not only do you have to watch out for those ghastly ghosts, but also for the glitch of doom. And because of your natural ability and skills with, well, <laughs> everything, you will soon be a grandmaster. A Shibuya Grandmaster. This game is like a bizarro version of Tetris. There are falling blocks, but you have to add the color that they will become. Two of the same color allows you to break them apart and clear them, but you have to really plan your strategy. Oh, uh, okay, well that didn't work out very well. I'm just gonna move to a slower speed. Okay, well maybe I'm not a Grandmaster yet, but if this game had some shooting, well, I'd be great at it. I'm just gonna try my luck with Callie's Caves 3. 
If you haven't played Callie's Caves 1 or 2, well, good news, you don't really need to to figure out what is happening. What you need to know is this. You have a sword and an arsenal of firearms in your quest to rescue your parents from the evil Dr. Herbert. The game is a really fun platformer that has you battling all different kinds of enemies across 120 levels. You can level up your weapons and yourself the more you play. It also has a very interesting checkpoint system every few levels, so if you die before reaching the next one, you have to start a couple levels back. It makes it so you just can't run into a situation, guns a-blazin'. But if you want to, make sure you have some milk and or fruit to eat to regain those hearts. The game also has some pretty great boss battles as well. Oh, after all that action, why don't we relax by going for a ride in my top app of this episode. Does Not Commute. Does Not Commute is awesome. You guide a car on a specific path to get where it needs to go in the shortest amount of time. However, after guiding one car, you have to guide another, and another, and another. All then moving simultaneously and all while avoiding the previous cars. If you crash, your car goes slower, and you can keep it at that pace or rewind time but lose one second. And each second is precious. There are timer boosts you can grab, but your overall time moves on with you to each level. So the more time you have, the better you'll do down the line. Also, it is important to note that just like in real life, each kind of vehicle handles differently, so be aware of that when the timer starts. There are also power-ups you can use, like traction or speed, but they each have drawbacks. Traction makes the car go slower, and speed makes the traction worse. What really adds to the entire game is the little bits of information we are given about each of the car's inhabitants. Links to all the apps can be found, in the description below, and I hope you enjoy them, because I just, I just want to make you happy, you know? And, as always, thanks for watching.